ladies and gentlemen. So we want to thank everyone for coming here tonight. Greetings in the name of Yeshua. Shalom, shalom. If we could go to the Lord in prayer for a moment here, just get in the mood, get in the spirit. It's great to have fellowship. I believe it pleases the Lord, but I also believe it pleases Him when we pray as well. Amen. So let's take a moment and have a word of prayer as everyone's coming in here tonight. Father, we're so grateful. We're so thankful for your word. We're so thankful for you. We're so thankful for Jesus. We're so thankful for who you are tonight. We're so thankful, Lord God, for bringing Jesus into the world. We're so thankful tonight for bringing Barry and Bush with his wife with us tonight. And so we just want to take a moment to give you glory, honor, and praise for what you're going to do here tonight, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord, that this is one of the spouts where the glory of God comes out. And we believe, God, tonight that the glory of God will flow in this place today. In Jesus' name. How many are in agreement with me? Could I see your hands, please? Amen. Well, for that, then, we are going to turn it over to Mr. Barry Siegel and his beautiful wife, and they're going to take it home for us. So, brother... Just come on in. Now, look at this. I was going to... Never quite sure if I'm overdressed. And tonight, you're looking like you're in someone's home. And that means I should dress down and not be so serious. But look at the color to confirm that we match. So here it goes. The transformation... Clark Kent to Superman, right? Here he goes. No, to real man. Okay, to real man. I love it. This is it. The anointing is on you, brother. You have the mantle. I have the microphone, not the mantle yet. <laughs> All right. Well, there we go. So for those of you who expected to be very formal, I can now revert to my other mode, which is Jewish rock and roll, guitar playing stuff. Sorry about that. Did my wife go on leave? So, you know, nothing's really like overly rigid here, but I want to teach you a word in Hebrew in case we need to use this word later. Uh, this is probably one of the most common expressions in Hebrew. Where are you going? I'm sitting here. Okay. <laughs> one of the most common expressions in Hebrew that actually, believe it or not, is not a Hebrew word, but Israel is great at importing other expressions and words from other countries and then making them famous as if we originated all of it. So the word is sababa. All right, sa, ba, ba, ba. sababa. So if you're coming to Israel or you're enjoying tonight or you wanna talk to some Israeli that's walking in the streets or visiting as a tourist in Las Vegas, and I'm sure there are many of them losing their money, uh, then if you spring that word sababa on them, they will really be impressed by what you say. Now, what does it mean? Take a hike. No, it doesn't mean that. <laughs> it means it's like everything's cool. It's all right. It's sababa. It's fine. No problem. Sababa. So that's a new word for all of you to learn. And therefore, yalla, yalla, everything is sababa. <laughs> that's coming from an ex-guitar playing Jew from Motown who was with the band Guns and Moses. <laughs> Now, when I played in a band, I could fit that shirt. 
actually. But tonight, it's uh, our joy to be here with all of you. It's been some time since we were next door in the uh, church facility and kind of the, I think it was black ceiling, flat black painted, and we had a great time there. And tonight, we're back here in Las Vegas. Bhati and I just flew in from, uh, I was gonna say Detroit, but that's not true. We just flew in from Jerusalem, from Israel, uh, on Thursday night. And um, we've been here many times before. In fact, uh, uh, I say many times before, but never enough. And uh, we feel the people, I don't know what, how people describe Las Vegas or overall what people think of it, but I can tell you it's one of the warmer places that we meet people when we've come and visited, uh, more than the average city. And that's probably unusual to hear, but I'm pretty perceptive of uh, a sense of feelings in terms of a cultural or a geographic issue and I can tell you that every time Bhati and I have come we have felt like we've been with family we're with people that are hospitable very understanding and I'm not just talking amongst believers I've met many store owners when there was a recession going on and found an openness that maybe sometimes you who live here don't perceive the same thing that I'm saying to you but I feel like God's given us a place here to come to visit and we have many friends and we'll make new friends tonight and um, one of our aims tonight is uh, one of a few aims tonight is to kind of update you on what's been happening this last year especially in Israel and then also to rejoice together in praise and worship to exercise our Hebraic roots in song and dance in words and to just have a good time, really. So, are we all in favor? Yes. What do we say? Yes. Sababa, you got it. So the first video, it'll be a while before I work off the food I just ate before I start singing with Bhatia, but um, the first video that we wanna show you tonight, and we'll lower the lights, I think, in just a little bit. Um, as you know, Actually, from the Jewish New Year of the previous year till the Jewish New Year ended this year in September was considered the 70th year anniversary of Israel as a modern nation state. And so most of us have extended that through to December 31st of this year because of the Gregorian calendar. And uh, there were tremendous uh, gatherings and festivities we had our own Sukkot celebration in Jerusalem. Uh, it was packed out, it was a great time. If you go to our website, visionforisrael.com, and I believe if you go under events, there's also a link to see all the teachings and all the programs from the celebration we held in Jerusalem, which was our, I think our 20th year doing it, as well as the conference that we hold every year the Feast of Tabernacles following that in England, in London, England, where I oversee and pastor four different fellowship groups. And so I fly generally once a month to England over the last 20 years. We are the kind of original Israeli Jewish missionaries that are sent out from Israel to reach also nations. And so we have a heart not only for our own nation, as you'll see tonight, but also for other nations. And it just so happened England fell into my lap and um, we have four fellowships of about 100 people each. And so there's a responsibility there and a lot of frequent flyer miles that come with it. <laughs> but um, the people of England are facing radical changes in their country today. And that's not the theme of my subject tonight, but there's a real rise of anti-Semitism going on and it's coming through government officials at the highest levels in the Labour Party under a man named Jeremy Corbyn, and the believers are being shaken, and especially the Jewish community today. Um, I would say 50% of the British Jewish population, which is one of the major Jewish populations in the world today, 
50% of the Jewish population is considering leaving should this Labour Party leader take over. So that's just one country. If you look at France, um, uh, one of the headlines I read today, Paris is burning. There have already been a thousand demonstrators that have been arrested. And um, of course, President Trump made some comments about uh, President Macron of France, and he was kind of chiding him because of the Paris Climate Accord and the taxes that the President of France was going to levy additional taxes on the working people uh, has uh, caused a revolt and the president has more or less disappeared uh, from the public at the moment because nobody knows how inflamed the situation will get to. But I was watching video footage just before coming here tonight and it's like on lockdown. It's just crazy what's going on. But I find it very interesting. What does Genesis chapter 12 verse 3 says? It says, I will bless those who bless thee, and I will curse those that curse thee. Behind the scenes, in recent months, years, and decades, France has undermined Israel's stance in the international community on a consistent basis. And this week, the Minister of Justice, I believe, is who it was in the government, gave a promotion to the BDS movement of boycott, divestment, and sanctions to boycott Israel in Judea and Samaria, but really it's another word for anti-Semitism and anti-Israel posturing. So I find it amazing that parallel, the same week that these riots and this um, situation is going on in France is the same week the Minister of Justice came against Israel in a very nasty, disasterly way. And France has been one of those nations who have defied the U.S. boycott, of economic boycott of Iran, who's on a drive to, uh, towards nuclear weapons. And with one idea in mind, and that's to destroy the nation of Israel. So I really believe that oftentimes what we see in the natural, in the news, is always on opposite or coinciding with the rail in the supernatural realm, what we don't see. And because of that, Bhatti and I send out every week in English and once a week in Spanish now, and it's a free service, we send out something called the JNN News. How many of you receive it? A few of you, not many. All I can tell you is this, and, and Rabbi Shmuel, who's visiting us tonight also, is that uh, we send it to about 30,000 people every week via email. It goes in a few different languages, but what's key about it is it gives you an update of the real news that's happening on the ground in Israel and throughout the Middle East, together with scripture and with ways that you can pray to not only pray through the news and the scriptures to understand and define what's happening in the Middle East, but to get through this, all of this kind of faked and baked news and all these kinds of things that are constantly written against Israel or undermining or, you know, just nothing in the press at all. I mean, I don't know how many newspapers told you that just a few weeks ago, over 500 rockets of Hamas in the Gaza Strip were shot into the southern region of Israel. What nation, think about it, what sovereign nation in the entire world, I don't care if it's Russia, the United States, Paraguay, or Mexico, or Canada, or France, what nation would stand by and suffer through 500 rocket attacks just in one weekend? The nation called Israel. That the world holds to a standard that even the world doesn't follow. And so tonight we hope to not only bring you the real news, but also bring you good news, because that's why we're here tonight, it's because of the good news, amen? Sababa. So the first thing I wanna show you is a video that uh, I did earlier this year for Israel's independence, uh, uh, 70th year as a modern nation state, because in reality, Israel is how old? 
Anybody know? Nearly 3,000, about 3,300 years old. When King David first reigned in Jerusalem. And so let's watch it. How are we doing there? I love you, so. <laughs> yeah, we have before. Yeah, yeah you can, can enlarge it on the right side. It on the, right side. the psalmist says, the Lord builds up Jerusalem he gathers together the outcasts of Israel. I'm going to be joining thousands of people coming here on Mount Herzl to gather together for the ceremony celebrating Israel's 70th year anniversary. This is a joyous event and this is a great historic time in Israel's history in this ancient land. Thousands of people will be participating in this event, including soldiers, including dancers and singers and various artists who perform. And of course, our own Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, who will give a keynote speech. <laughs> גם היום יש מי שרוצה לכבות את המנורה, לכבות את האור שבוקע מציון. אני מבטיח לכם, זה לא יקרה. זה לא יקרה משום שהאור שלנו תמיד יגבר על החושך שלהם. to the show, folks. Shalom, this is Barry Siegel greeting all of you from Vision for Israel in the Joseph Storehouse. To all of you at this conference as we celebrate today with Israel for its 70th year anniversary celebrations from the north port of Tel Aviv, and we're here for the aerial flyby show. Even the doves in love are here for the air show. What's your most favorite thing that comes to your mind about Israel? Um, first thing, um, people here are very tough. They know how to manage those, um, what happened before. For instance, the Holocaust. They know how to manage Suffering yes. crisis. Yes. Yeah. 
ובעצם להראות שאנחנו מתגאים בזה שיש לנו מדינה ואחרי כל כך הרבה שנים שנאבקנו בשביל המדינה הזאת אנחנו צריכים להראות שהשגנו אותה ואנחנו חוגגים את זה וזה הדבר הכי חשוב. מצליחים ורוצים שלום ומי שבא יש פה כיף, יש פה אוכל אנחנו רוצים לפתח ואנחנו רוצים לאהוב את כולם. הכי חשוב שיש פה ביטחון חזק מאוד שאנחנו יכולים שהילדים שלנו יצאו מהבית ספר לבד, ילכו הביתה, ילכו לחברים שלהם, אין בעיה של ביטחון, לא מפחדים מאף אחד, זה הכי חשוב. כל אחד באמת הולך, נותן תורם את השלוש שנים שלו בצבא, זה לא פשוט, אבל בסוף יש ביטחון. בסוף בסוף אנחנו דואגים לעצמנו, יש ביטחון, ואנחנו מדינה חזקה. Generations are changing here. הרבה שמחה, סוף סוף יש לנו מדינה. סבלנו אלפיים שנה בגלות. היה מאוד מאוד לא, לא פשוט ולא קל. ואנחנו שמחים שיש לנו מדינה בת שבעים, מצליחה מבחינה טכנולוגית, רפואית, כלכלית, חקלאות, ייצור. מצוין פה. אנחנו גאים במדינה שלנו. מדינת ישראל, יחי מדינת ישראל. אמן. ישראל היום בת שבעים. נכון, אני גאה במדינה שלי ואני שמחה ואני נושאת את הדגל של המדינה. מדינת ישראל. מקום ראשון בעולם. Here in Israel you can tell that Israelis are proud of their country. They've come out to celebrate for this anniversary celebration. Just look at all the people out today, all the fun, all the eating, all the kef, that's a word for like all the great things. And we just want to wish you again, Israel, happy birthday. So that uh, is how we celebrated one of many celebrations. The big celebration at night we attended actually, and one of the fascinating things about the celebration was on a, I don't know how you call them technically, but it was kind of a banner that, uh, with electric lights that would go around in a circle because there was thousands of people there. And all throughout the night, there were scriptures in Hebrew And I thought to myself, what nation, even as a secular nation, secular, orthodox, believing, unbelieving in God and Israel, what nation would just freely, boldly proclaim God's word in front of a people? And we heard in the video, Prime Minister Netanyahu referring to a verse, Kumi ori kiva orech, arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. So tonight, this is the seventh evening night of Hanukkah, the Feast of Dedication. It's mentioned in the Gospel of John when the disciples were in Jerusalem. And I think right around that time, we see in Scripture where Yeshua says, I am the light of the world. And so tonight, we want to light these candles up here for the seventh night of Hanukkah. Hanukkah means, uh, comes from a root word, education, dedication, And um, although it's not considered one of the biblical holidays mentioned in Leviticus 23, nevertheless, it is a significant holiday celebrated every year in Israel, uh, again, remembering the defeat of Israel's enemies who destroyed the temple, desecrated it in Jerusalem. Tonight, we can light those lights again and know that our God reigns. He's an awesome God. And he has protected Jerusalem through all sorts of uh, occupations and through history. 
and God is unveiling the history of the Maccabees um, through archaeology and forensics, and it's amazing how the more the world comes against God's word, the more God digs up the Jewish roots of the gospel in the heart of Israel. One of those archaeologists is a dear friend of ours who uncovered much of the city of David because up until about 20 years ago, there was actually a question whether this King David even existed. Where's the proof? And then they found the proof in the north of Israel and then they uncovered it in layers and layers in Jerusalem. And then after that, our friend who's a famous archaeologist discovered the pools of Siloam where Yeshua healed the blind man. I believe that's where the clay was rubbed in the eyes. And so all this is now above ground. You can go and visit and see it and feel it and be part of it. This is exciting. We are living in exciting days. Amen? So I'm not sure who's leading the lighting, but um, here we go. She's on her way. And you tell us if there's anything anybody should do or you go for it. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech olam, asher kiddushanu b'mitzvah tov, v'tzivanu lihad leitner shel Hanukkah. Blessed are, you. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who sanctifies us by his commandments to kindle the Hanukkah lights. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who, who perform wondrous deeds for our ancestors in those ancient days at this season. So we have the Hanukkah lights lit, not only for the, uh, here the seventh night, and there the seventh night. Good. Double sevens. We're all right. I was just checking. So we think that's a good song to start with. We know that the dancers tonight have prepared some dances with some of the music. So hopefully we can coordinate this together. Uh, Bhatti has written many of the songs that we're doing tonight. They come from the prophets. And let's all stand. And the Arise. Sun. Arise and shine, for your light has come. Should have it on the, the screen. the glory of the Lord has risen There we go. You. Thank you, Lord. Everybody say, Kumi. Louder, Kumi. Uri. Oh, 
Jerusalem, from the prophet Isaiah, I have set watchmen. Hallelujah, Lord. We pray for Jerusalem tonight. Oh, Lord God of Israel, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, tonight, Lord, we pray for every resident and citizen of Jerusalem and throughout the nation of Israel. Lord God, your word says to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, they shall prosper that love thee. We pray for the outpouring of your spirit on all flesh in Israel tonight. Amen. Thank you. 
So we're going to resume with a bit of music in a little while, but we'll give those of you whose heart needs to catch up with your f feet. I don't know one of you. <laughs> Anyhow, it, look, I get so jealous because we're not good at singing and dancing together, but on its own, I could get into it. Messianic break dancing, the wave of the future. So in just a little bit, we'll continue with some more worship. Uh, I mentioned to you the JNN News um, signing up for it, and at the table outside where our CDs are afterwards, there'll be some clipboards or sign-up sheets. But also tonight, um, we have um, something that I'd like to share a little bit more about our ministry. Uh, no, where are you going with that? Yeah. No, no. We're gonna pass them out now. <laughs> oh, <laughs> he's trying to run off with the goods. But tonight we brought a little packet of information for all of you and I'll show you a video in just a minute. This is kind of a three part evening. So part one has now officially concluded with this. So uh, uh, we would like to give one to a couple or one to each of you if you're on your own. So if uh, Shmuel and Barry, you could help us pass them out to those who don't have one. This tells you a little bit about what we do and who we are in Israel. And um, while they're doing that, I will share with you a little bit about what we do. For those of you who have never seen us or met us, first of all, how many of you have seen us, met us somewhere, somehow? That's most of you. We can all go home. <laughs> um, um, first of all, besides the ministry work, I also have a TV program that if you haven't had the opportunity to come to Israel or you have been to Israel but you want to continue taking a journey to the places that tour groups don't always go to, um, Friday mornings at 8 o'clock a.m. your time on Daystar TV, my program is called Roots and Reflections, and it's also 6 a.m.? No, 6 a.m. on Wednesday, isn't it? I think it's 6 a.m. on Wednesday, and I think it's 8 a.m., I think I'm right, on Friday. And then it's also on some other channels, but it's called Roots and Reflections, and it's everything you ever wanted to visit or see in Israel, including the kitchen sink. Because each and every episode has a featured restaurant or a recipe that Bati is cooking in the kitchen, some Middle Eastern recipe. Now, the real honest truth is, Bati and I are both born-again Jewish believers in Yeshua the Messiah. Amen? Sababa. The difference is, I grew up and was born in Motown, a city called Detroit. And so, and then as a teenager, I moved from the home of soul music to the home of rock and roll. And that's Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, we actually have Clevelanders here, that's amazing. And then, <laughs> and then um, after being, uh, well, I have to tell you the honest truth without sharing tonight my testimony, because I did that when I was here before. But basically, I could sum up my background in a nutshell. Uh, I was pretty much an average good Jewish boy all the way through my bar mitzvah, and everything was great until the night of my bar mitzvah because the night of my bar mitzvah created a riot. 
known as the Detroit riots in July 1967, literally took place the night of my bar mitzvah. After that, my hair grew very long. I became a radical left-wing progressive communist Marxist atheist hippie yippie anti-American revolutionary pot smoking Jewish rock and roll guitar player for a rock and roll band in the Midwest. <laughs> that is where it all continues and my journey with God begins. At the age a week shy of my 17th birthday, so effectively my 17th birthday while I was still in high school, playing professionally in a band across the Midwest. One night I was leaving a Jewish delicatessen, not high in my right mind. I was going home to practice guitar at about 11 at night. And as I got to the back side of the deli, uh, carrying a corned beef sandwich with Thousand Island dressing and Swiss cheese, I'll never forget that. I fell to my knees, sensing I was in the presence of someone else. As the food fell on the ground, an audible voice spoke to me three times, saying, Barry, you should have more faith in this. Three times I heard an audible voice of the Lord, and all I can tell you, on my knees on this street corner by a big oak tree, which is still there, the restaurant's not, but the tree is, I understood not having gone to church, not somebody praying with me, never reading the New Testament, hardly ever even knowing the Old Testament, although from my bar mitzvah and Hebrew school and all that. But in that split moment of time, I knew that Yeshua was knocking at the door of my heart and I instantly became a believer in Yeshua, Jesus the Messiah. And I've never been the same since. So I went from this revolutionary, hippie, yippie, pot-smoking, guitar-playing Jew to becoming a Baptist-Pistacoso Messianic Jew. <laughs> How does that go again? Baptist-Pistacoso Messianic Jew. Something like that, anyways. So I've been serving the Lord in various ways and different changes in our lives. And I would make Aliyah in 1981 after two previous trips to Israel. I made Aliyah and immigrated to Israel in the summer of 1981 by invitation and together with my spiritual father named Derek Prince, a Bible teacher. And I ended up living with them for six years in Jerusalem until Bhatti and I were married. And the night we were married, I asked him if we could move in and he said, get out of the house. <laughs> that was it. And Bhatti and I have been married now 31 years. Amen. We have three lovely children, <clears throat> and um, all I can say is they're all on fire for Yeshua today. They all love the Lord. <clears throat> and they serve in different roles in ministry, in the military, in business, but they're all loving Yeshua, serving God, and now we have three lovely grandchildren, the youngest of who is... His name is Boaz. And the interesting story about Boaz, I thought we'd show a picture, but we don't have it. Uh, we didn't send it to them. But uh, our son, <clears throat> when he was born, he was um, the nurse, uh, the midwife, was actually um, a Dutch Holocaust survivor, Dutch Jewish Holocaust survivor, and her name was Sophie. And all I remember from my son's birth was he came out a bloody mess and I fainted. And the next thing I knew, this Holocaust survivor, Sophie, was slapping me on the cheek going, come on, can't you take a little blood? And so <clears throat> my son was born and we sang to him a song we will sing towards the end, Hodu la Adonai, give thanks to the Lord for he is good, about the second song that the Lord ever gave to Baltia. And with his squinting eyes, you could tell as an unborn baby, in the womb, we used to sing it to him almost every night. When he was born, it's like he knew that song already. Now, history comes a year and a month and a half ago, and our grandson is born to my son and his Dutch believing wife. Interesting. And the midwife in Hadassah Hospital in Jerusalem is a Dutch born-again Israeli Messianic Jewish believer whose name is Naomi. 
So when he was born, they gave him the name Boaz. And he's the first in our family to have blonde hair and blue eyes, and real blonde hair and blue eyes. And so he's just such a joy. But Bhati and I, after we met, and I had moved to Jerusalem, we were in, we were in business, uh, and we had a congregation which I was the uh, founder and the leader of for about eight years. But everything would change um, in the 1990s. And um, one of the things that God had showed me was, and it's today's Torah portion this weekend from Genesis chapter 41, or in Hebrew we say Bereshit, and it's the story of Joseph and Pharaoh and about the vision of seven years of prosperity followed by seven years of famine. And it was that vision and those words that convinced me that God was preparing us to do something beyond our congregation, which was called Kehilat Brit Yerushalayim, the covenant of Jerusalem. And so we started, according to Proverbs, it says, without a vision, the people perish. So we began a new work called Vision for Israel. At that time, we recorded a new album, which has without a doubt been our most successful, widely sold album in the world today, called Shema Yisrael, which is also on the table, means Hero Israel. All this was happening between 1993 and 94. We officially established Vision for Israel as a 501c3 in the US in 1994, as well as in Israel, and then later in other nations. But everything was geared towards helping the household of faith, the new immigrants like I was, lone soldiers of which I also was in the Israeli army, but I had no family in Israel. And uh, in fact, just to let you know, Batia was in the Israeli Navy, I was in the Golani Brigade, um, and our children all served in the military or serve even today. And, um, and uh, the beautiful thing of this whole thing is, is that we just wanted to be at the right place and at the right time in everything. And how many of you know that you can pray every day at the dinner table, breakfast, whatever, before you get started, Lord, help me to be at the right place, at the right time, everywhere and in everything, and give me divine appointments. And that's a regular prayer in our household. And I really believe in that, that God can create a scenario and a situation where you're where you're supposed to be. I'm alive today because of that. My son's alive today because of that. Our children are alive because of that. Because during the 1990s, we were facing terrible suicide terrorism. And in February 1996, a Hamas suicide bomber blew himself up the day we arrived home from a music tour in South Africa, and he murdered over 20, well, he murdered exactly 26 people, 24 instantly, and two that died later of the injuries, and over 40 people injured. On that bus, our older daughter had three of her friends killed. These friends were in her high school class, murdered just like that at the at, you know, a prime age. One week later, the same bus number, 18, our daughter was training uh, another student to become uh, in the internal security guard for Prime Minister Netanyahu when he was first Prime Minister. She was also murdered. These are maniacs. These are people that are committed to evil. And it makes me wonder how the UN wouldn't condemn Hamas in the United Nations this week. Doesn't it tell us something how wacky the world's gotten to be? I've come to call them the United Nothings because they seem to not get anything done in the right direction. And I've had friends that work there as well and they tell me a lot of things that just, it's terrible. But to say all this, that jettisoned our work into helping thousands and thousands of people, especially victims of terror attacks, just to let you know, since the inception and beginning and the work of Vision for Israel in the Joseph Storehouse, we've now helped over 900,000 Israeli Jews, Arabs, and people, citizens and residents from any and all minority groups that exist in Israel today, especially amongst our own, the Jewish believers in Israel. But 
along with that, we're helping Holocaust survivors, we're helping feed the poor, we're providing for the victims of terror attacks, the families, widows, and orphans. What does the book of Yaakov, James say? True religion before God and the Father is this, to take care of the widows and the orphans in their time of need. And there's scripture after scripture throughout the Old and New Testaments that talk about taking care of the poor and needy in our midst. And nearly every Jewish holiday, if not every Jewish holiday, always tells us to remember the poor. And so we've learned through the years that this is probably the most powerful, greatest witness of God's compassionate love for the people of Israel, not only the Jews, but also the Arabs. Not only the Christian Arabs, but also the Muslims, who have opened up at the amazement how us as Jews are willing to bless them with gifts of compassion and aid if they have a legitimate need. We don't give out to people that don't need. And along with that, we've now helped 240,000 children go back to school with brand new school packs and bags on their back. And so this next video I'd like to show you is just two weeks ago, a group that was a tour group, because Pastor G asked, he said, are we accepting volunteers? Well, we haven't gotten the whole program set up at our website, our new website, but yes, we are looking for laborers in the harvest. There is a system and a process to go through, and it's only now a three-month period as opposed to the old days when we'd get visas for a year, two years, but it changes people's lives. And I'd like you to see this video of one such group who canceled one of two of their tour days in Israel just to serve the people of Israel. These are all Christians. I don't think there are any Jews amongst them, but they came to bless and they're in our new ministry center called the Millennium Center. Sababa? Sababa. Let's watch it. Joseph Storehouse at the Millennium Center in the heart of Israel. We're giving out from our hearts to the people throughout this nation, both to Jews and to Arabs and to the minority groups, with food packages, with clothing, and with life's basic necessities. You can also come and join us at the Millennium Center, put your hands to the plow, put your hands on the work, and join us as we give out to the nation of Israel. Today we have a team of 21 people who are helping to package food for widows and orphans and the poor and needy here in the nation of Israel. And uh, we've been working this morning and we continue to work today to help the work of Vision for Israel, to help feed the poor and the needy. And our heart for um, this nation and for the people of Israel is to help them and to bless them. And so I want to encourage you also, if you're watching this, that Vision for Israel is a fantastic ministry to work with and full of integrity. And they are helping the poor and the needy here in Israel and doing a wonderful work with the IDF and many other people, terror victims, and just a great, great way to support the nation of Israel. And we're packing here packages for the poor and the needy of food. We're going to provide thousands of families with, with uh, dry food packages where they can just add water to it, a little bit of spices, and make very delicious vegetarian soups for the winter. Does it... Uh vegetable mixture, a, a mineral mix, mixture, uh, soy, which is a protein mixture, and a rice. It, we, we put six meals in a bag, and that is a complete meal for the poor people. This will be distributed to the refugees, poor Israelis. Uh, when I was working on the Syrian border, we were giving, I was giving six bags to each person that came in every day to uh, supplement them. Uh, this will, will feed six people completed is and then you can also add uh, some tomato sauce and other stuff that make it a little bit better tasting. We're labeling, we're filling and sealing, uh, preparing them for to be sealed um, so that people have food and so for every single package it can feed up to six children which is incredible. So lots of nutrients um, going out to hungry bellies. I bless you mightily for uh, the work that, that God has had you to do. And it, it's been a, a privilege just to be able to know you through the years and uh, to see that you have been very responsible with the resources that God has given you. And um, uh, it blesses my heart because Operation Exodus, uh, we have been able to bring uh, more than 175,000 
Jewish people to Israel, but then you've had to take care of them once we got here. And I come and I see, I mean, they're packing right now 30,000 packages of food for um, uh, the poor people here in the land. And we're just here to just support Israel and to reach out to the underprivileged, um, just to really support them and just to bless Israel in any way we can. I come here to give. We come so much times, so many times to receive yeah. from what went from Israel, and this time we're coming to give. Tell me, who did this and why did you bring it to us? Because we were coming and they were saying you're supporting the people that um, that have come in and didn't have the support. Mm -hmm. And so I'm thinking winter's coming mm -hmm. and they could use these hats. And, and who I, needed them? My mom did. I, oh, I did. Hey. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I, appreciate them. I made some short for, for women and then for men because you could make it any size. We are so excited to see life coming into our building. And I said to our staff, as we were dedicating the, the Jewish New Year this year, I said, now that we've finished building this building with stone and brick, now we're building lives of people, and we're just so grateful and thankful for this building, for this facility, for what God is giving us, and for God's provision of people, of hands, and of the love that we receive all around us just to bless the people of Israel. This is awesome. And we thank you so much for standing with us. Continue to pray for more laborers as Barry and I and all of us here, our team, are in great need of hands and of laborers. Thank you so much. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Batia, yeah. come and join me. Batia's testimony is so different than mine, but we're going to continue singing a little bit more so the lights can go on so the dancers can see. But Batia was born in Jerusalem, and she was born not far from where our children were born. And um, she was everything a good Jewish girl should be growing up. So you can imagine it was like mixing gasoline or no. What, how do you say it? That? What mixes? Oil and water. Oil and water. <laughs> Which one was I? I was the match. <laughs> but um, anyhow, Gabbati is one of the early pioneers of Hebraic Messianic songwriting in Israel, and that prompted uh, a wave of other people to get into the industry to write songs in English and Spanish and other languages together with Hebrew to really glorify the Lord, and we want to do that again. Are we ready? Not really. Not really? In a minute. What would you it's like to warming say? up. Um, well, I just think it's a privilege for us to be here and with all of you, and to be honest, um, as Barry says, we've been married for uh, 31 years. It's and been, how many days? I didn't count the days. <laughs> it's actually almost 32 years. In, yeah, you're right. Yeah. But anyway, um, it's just, when Barry introduced me to America, it was in our honeymoon, and um, I uh, was just so uh, amazed to come to this country and to learn, I mean, actually I summed it up in one word when they asked me to describe America, and I said, one word, three letters, B-I-G. Everything was big here, big people, big cars, big meals, everything was big. And to be honest, Barry was taking us, we, in those days, we had this Visit, visit USA ticket. That you buy a ticket for 30 days for $500 and you can go anywhere and we are like as good Jews. We wanted to make the most of it, of this ticket. And we were like, how many, how many states? We 18 were, states or we 20 were, states um, in 30 days? 24 flights in 12 cities in 30 days. So when I came back home after the honeymoon, I was exhausted. And I had to meet, I mean, we basically had parties in, I think, 12 states. In every place, Barry was, um, everybody knew Barry. So in every state we were visiting, they had a big party for us. And uh, it was just really... Um, 
for me, it really warmed my heart to meet the people here and to see the, the love of the, of the people here, of the congregations and the, the people we met, really valuable people. And when I came back home, I, just, uh, I was just really overjoyed. And that's where our really ministry began. And we had, a, we had a business, and the business was doing a lot of publications. And we were doing a lot of, um, actually, um, books. It was a lot of books for believers as well. And uh, to tell you the truth, I think it was like God was preparing us for the time of starting um, Vision for Israel. And um, everything, we impl everything we've actually ex exercised in our business, we implemented in our ministry in Vision for Israel. And um, today I can just be so grateful for what God has done and he's continued to do in our lives. And it's, it's, um, I feel like we're in almost um, a, a race do you feel that way sometimes? Like that you're in a race to achieve more and to do more and to, you know, you, you never, you can never get tired when you're worshiping the Lord and when you're moving on with Him. And that's, I think that's really the secret of our lives. So we're just very honored to be here with you today. And um, Barry, what would you like to do? Sing, dance. In the latter days? Yeah. Okay. That's all. Everybody's ready? Get going here. Okay. Going up, going up to the mountain. Going up to the house of the Lord. In the latter days on the mountain of Zion, all nations shall flow to the house of the Lord. All people will bow down to the God of Jacob. Going to the house of the Lord. We're 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 going to the
two more songs in closing, but I really want to um, bring to mind to all of you the present situation in Israel. And, um, you know, I think it's amazing. Um, you know, when you're, when you leave tonight, which should be, we should be finished by around midnight. Um, <laughs> when, you, when you leave, I really want to encourage you to sign up for the JNN News. Again, it's a free service. And if you also want it in the in Espanol, please just put SP or put Espanol or Spanish or so I'll know anyways, because we have a once a week version in that. But um, uh, here's the pulpit, that's right. Okay, that's official. That's an official turn, we're okay. To everything turn. Turn, turn. Okay, Psalm 74. Something about Hanukkah brought this to my mind uh, thinking today when we were in a service earlier today. And it says in verses four to eight, your enemies roar in the midst of your meeting place. They set up their banners for signs. They seem like men who lift up axes among the thick trees and now they break down its carved work all at once with axes and hammers. They have set fire to your sanctuary. They have defiled the dwelling place of your name to the ground. They said in their hearts, let us destroy them all together. They have burned up all the meeting places of God and the land. And you know, as I've served in the Israeli military during the two intifadas, as I watched the enemies of Israel from within and without, proclaimed their curses against Israel. I can't help but continually give praise to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, 
for the way he has delivered Israel through thick and thin, through over 15,000 rockets shot against Israel only in the last decade or so, by groups such as Hamas and Islamic Jihad and Hezbollah and Iran that's planning its own attack against Israel, God is much greater than all the enemies of Israel. And there's no president, there's no prime minister, there's no official governmental international body can stop the purposes of God. For what God has written in his word, he means to fulfill because what God says he does and what he does, he has already told us in this book, which I like to call the Bible, B-I-B-L-E, Basic Information Before Leaving Earth. So tonight, I just want to share a couple examples because we have seen that our uh, jihadist neighbors within and without have burnt and ransacked the tombs of Joshua, of Joseph, have done so against every prophetic prophet site in and around Israel in the Middle East. And you know, the Hamas terrorists would say during one of their wars, their leader, President Hania, now you're talking about leaders who have used the funds of the world, including the former taxpayers' money of the United States. Thank God for this administration that has shut the valve off to UNRWA and to the PLO, the thugs and terrorists who were using U.S. tax money, as well as in Europe, British tax money, going to pay the salaries of hardcore terrorists who are serving prison terms in Israeli prisons or their families being supported after their husbands or sons were killed for being shaheed, martyrs, to kill as many Jews as they could. They said in their hearts, let us destroy them all together. They have burned up all the meeting places of God in the land. This is exactly what Antiochus Epiphanes did under the Syrian Greek army that came into Israel and desecrated the temple during what today is known as Hanukkah. We are also reminded in the Psalms, it says at the end of Psalm 120, my soul has dwelt too long with one who hates peace. I am for peace, but when I speak, they are for war. Psalm 121, behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. Peace be within your walls, prosperity within your palaces. For the sake of my brethren and companions, I will now say peace be within you. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your good. And tonight, I'm here to tell you that Bati and I, not just because we are Israeli citizens, not just because we live in Jerusalem, not just because we are Jewish, but because we have been born again by the Ruach of God, the Spirit of God, we know that it is God's will for us to seek her good. Amen? And it says, and this is for all of us, it's not just for us that live in Israel. We could be blessing and, and helping other people send out missionaries and other nations, but at the hub, at the center of all we do, there's something that God requires of each and every one of us to partake of his blessings towards Israel. Because if the gospel, if the good news of Yeshua transforms the nation of Israel, it can transform the nations of the world. But unfortunately, I think sometimes evangelical leaders, even messianic leaders, sometimes get it wrong. If we transform everything in the nations, Israel will change. No, I believe the key to blessing for the nations began in Jerusalem is come back to Jerusalem to go out again to bless the nations of this world. It's what makes the engine move, people. So when I hear this term revival, I'm going, what revival? Evil is rising on the shores of every nation I know with anti-Semitism and, and attacks and, and it's just a mess. But somehow in the midst of this, God continues in his faithfulness 
to bless Israel in their unbelief. That's the amazing thing. Yeah. Even in their unbelief, God's blessing them. Yeah. And even corporations that in many ways, I mean, my observation, you may differ in opinion, but I follow you know, the stock market and things going on economically in the world. But I've seen that as Microsoft came in and invested over a half a billion dollars, I think it was, into Israel, that Apple invested over a half a billion dollars into Israel, that Google, for whatever you want to think of it, these companies, Intel, many other companies, uh, Warren Buffett, one of the wealthiest men in the whole earth, just invested a lot of money into Israel. Why are they running to Israel to invest? And they're being blessed for it. Because God continues to show favor. Because he's going to prove a point to the world, whether the world accepts it or not. Every nation can be against Israel, but with God on its side, it's a majority. With God on our side, it's a majority. Yeshua said, when the Son of Man comes in his glory, Matthew 25, and all the holy angels with them, and then he will sit on the throne of his, uh, his glory, all the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate them one from another as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. And he will set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry? And feed you or thirsty and give you drink. When did we see you a stranger or take you in or naked and clothe you? Or when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And the king will answer and say to them, Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, my Jewish brethren, you did it to me. The gauntlet is being put down as a test for us, for the nations, to get involved with his end time purposes. Just to show you as an example what in the world's going on with Israel. It's incredible. And by the way, there was a poll taken that 73% of Israeli Jews light Hanukkah candles. 85% of Israeli Jews are proud to be Israelis and happy to be Israelis. About 83% though of the same Israelis who are happy are also stressed out from driving in Israel. I'm one of those, actually. That's why I drive by faith and not by sight. <laughs> but one of the most fantastic things that's happening, as many of the Western nations have been weak and mild, other than the United States, concerning in the face of Iran, who has sworn to destroy Israel continually. They're cursing Israel saying they're going to destroy Israel. Sometimes when they say this, there are earthquakes right after they say it. I found it interesting, as I said earlier, when France is, Paris is burning and there is massive civil unrest. While this is going on, the justice minister was promoting an anti-Israel, anti-Semitic agenda. What goes around comes around. What you sow will be reaped in everything in our lives. But our dear prime minister, who we revere very much and pray for him, no prime minister, no president, no political person is perfect, but when they stand for biblical values and they stand for righteousness, there are things we need to take notice and be supportive of, especially in prayer. Suddenly, Arab nations that were our sworn enemies in the Middle East, sworn enemies to our destruction, Bahrain, has now officially acknowledged the nation state of Israel and has castigated and rebuked Hezbollah for its tunneling that they're trying to do to start a new war in the Middle East. Which, by the way, is a Hanukkah miracle this week. We can give God the glory. Someone in intelligence or somebody found a crevice in the limestone and it led to the first tunnel terrorist tunnel that Israel just found last Tuesday. Wow. 
which would have ushered in an elite team of Hezbollah jihadist terrorists to cut off Metula, the northeastern city of Israel by the Lebanese border and start killing as many Jews, men, women, and children as they could have. That was nearly operational. They just discovered this weekend the second tunnel. There could have been a war this past week in Israel. Could have been, may still be. Hezbollah is sitting in Lebanon with 130 to 150,000 short range and medium and long range missiles, mostly planted into residential buildings so that when Israel retaliates, the world will condemn Israel for the killing, that they will blame Israel even though it's all in self-defense. This is how the terrorists work. And Israel has sent a strong warning to the Lebanese government. You will be destroyed if you allow this to continue because the day that Hezbollah begins shooting rockets from apartment buildings and residential buildings in Beirut, it won't just be Israelis who normally sit in cafes that have to go to bomb shelters, but every Lebanese citizen will be in a bomb shelter. We are getting close to something about to break in the Middle East, but Bahrain rebuked Hezbollah on the public stage. The Sultan of Oman, a very strict Muslim, met with our Prime Minister and is warming relations with Israel. Saudi Arabia, I know all the things that have been going on in the news, but behind the scenes in the military and intelligence fields, Saudi Arabia is cooperating with Israel in intelligence because their biggest fear and threat is Iran, who's fomenting terror, the number one provider of funds to terrorism in the world today is the nation called Iran. And remember the tremendous... Uh, uh, espionage or uh, Mossad, incredible, that we smuggled out all the files from a location near Tehran, I believe it was, of Iran's nuclear weapons program and got them out back to Israel. Spent one whole year translating the scientific nuclear research and program files into English, Hebrew, and whatever other languages. And Netanyahu showed it to the world and just totally revealed the nakedness of Iran's intentions. And you know what the foreign minister of the European Union, the EU or the PU said? I don't know if it's convincing enough evidence. So blind is the world. But you know who took notice? The Sunni Arab nations of the Middle East. The United Arab Emirates, where Abu Dhabi is, for the first time ever, an Israeli, not the first time Israelis have won in athletics there, but the first time an Israeli won gold medal, world gold medal, in judo, in game competition in Dubai at the end of October, and they played the Israeli national anthem, Hatikva, in an Arab Islamic capital in the Middle East with tears streaming down our cultural uh, uh, Mary Regev, the Minister of Culture and Sports. We made history, the people of Israel live, and she openly wept. Dubai, I hear they just opened the first Jewish synagogue in Dubai. Dubai? Dubai, Dubai, I don't know, this is incredible, I wanna go. I think it's amazing. And the, the nations that are considering moving their embassies to Jerusalem. Thank God the United States did what it did and we had a bold enough president to make the decision based on an earlier congressional vote two decades ago. We were at a reception with Ambassador David Friedman the next day after the uh, embassy moved. A nice guy, nice guy, loves the evangelical Christian community across the world. That's who your U.S. ambassador to Israel is, David Friedman. An incredible thing. Chile's now considering, from what I hear. Brazil, for sure, is planning to move. 
Poland's talking about it. Romania's talking about it. Czech is talking about it. Hungary's talking about it. Next thing we know, Iran's going to move there. Because we have all their secrets now anyways. They might as well move. People, God is doing something in our midst. But God's word also says, and uh, I want to read this from scripture and, and uh, show you this last four minute video and invite uh, one of our local messianic rabbis who is no longer officially in that position but is considered nowadays a grandfather to the movement in many ways. And it says in Romans chapter uh, 15, and I'd also like to get the last video up. Um, I believe it's a terror victims video. Romans 15 verses 25 to 27 says, but now I am going to Jerusalem to minister to the saints. For it pleased those from Las Vegas and Macedonia. <laughs> Are you there? Sababa to make a certain contribution for the poor among the saints who are in Jerusalem. It pleased them indeed, and they are their debtors, for if the Gentiles have been partakers of their spiritual things, their duty is also to minister into them in their material things. Let's have a look at this video, and I remind you again, when we schmooze outside afterwards, uh, please sign up for the jam. Oh, is it? I don't know. Whatever you gave her. Is it? So it's the Holocaust or whatever. You should have called me on the phone from here to there. <laughs> Sign. Hanging in the balance. Well, let's see if it works. It dropped. No one can erase the memory of the Holocaust, but together we can help its survivors live in comfort and dignity. It is our goal to provide financial aid, warmth, and fellowship to Israel's Holocaust survivors. Let us show these dear men and women how much you love them by joining us in our mission to provide Israel's last Holocaust survivors with the security, support, and warmth that they so desperately need. Well, 
just wanted to say, both those women live in Jerusalem. They're both Holocaust survivors. Every time I read and hear what she says in Hebrew about losing both sons, I was just, I don't know how people deal with life in that situation. And we're not talking about some natural death. We're talking about the brutality of Nazism. But today there's a new Nazism on the earth. Yeah. And it's rising up, the demonic from the pit of hell. But I know that our God is greater than all this. Yeah. And I know that what he is doing in front of the world stage with Israel will overturn the unbelievers to recognize that there is only one God and one Messiah. His name is Yeshua. Amen. My name is uh, Shmuel uh, Oppenheim. I led uh, Lev Hashem Messianic Synagogue here in Las Vegas for 11 years. It was a, a wonderful 11 uh, years. And uh, I have known Barry and Batya for uh, many years. We had them at our congregation on several occasions. And I am very honored to share with you an encouragement that has to do with a love offering. There's something about uh, an offering. We give an offering, uh, first of all, out of obedience. God speaks to us. The offerings are found in his word. And we are obedient. When we are obedient before God, uh, there's a clear conscience. It's a good feeling. It's a good thing in our spirit to give. It is better to give than to receive. Another reason for giving is for the love of God. I give, I know you give, because you love the Lord. And boy, that has to be the strongest of motivations. I give because I love. And in this particular context, I also give because I love Barry and Bacha. And I thank, I thank, I thank God for their lives, for their ministry. I cannot imagine some of the things that they have been through, and in all the years I have only known of them to live it, to talk it, to preach it, and to serve God in the midst of it. Not too long ago, there was a gentleman who had been part of uh, the congregation that I led, Joseph Yosef Gottlieb. He was a part of Lev Hashem, oh, probably 10 years ago. He, he got uh, upset with me, and during, during a service, he uh, let it be, uh, let it be uh, uh, clearly known. It had to do over, uh, in Jewish tradition, the Kiddush, or the, the Communion. And I had shared with him on several occasions, Yosef, there, there really isn't a clear doctrine about what you do first insofar as the communion or the kiddush. You know, do you do the blessing over the wine or the, Jew, uh, the juice first? Or do you do the blessing over the bread first? And he had come to faith in Yeshua through a lot of a Roman Catholic background. And in the Catholic Church, if I'm not mistaken, they do the blessing over the bread first. And so he had been telling me, Shmuel, when you do the Kiddush, do the blessing over the bread first. And so I explained to him, you know, some of uh, my perspective. And I said, uh, Joseph, 
within Jewish life, culture, religion. We always do the blessing over the wine first. And so that's how we're going to do it here at Lev Hashem. But uh, just chill out, you know, relax, you know, no, no big deal. This is nothing to get upset of. And then on a Saturday morning, I was doing the Kiddush and uh, I started to do the blessing over the wine first, and he yells at me, Shmuel, I told you to do the blessing over the bread first. <laughs> and I said, Yosef, we've been th uh, through this, and he walked out and never came back for about seven or eight years. <coughs> and then about four or five years ago, he called me, he was getting really sick, so I go and see him, and he says, please forgive me for the way I behaved and yelled at you, and I shouldn't have done that, and of course I hugged him, yes, it's, you know, it, it's over, it, it, everything is, is, uh, is okay. The, the point of all of that was he passed away a couple of uh, months ago, 84 years old, and here's where I really saw what Barry and Bacha and their ministry and their work uh, in Israel is really about. Uh, there were three of us at Joseph Gottlieb's burial. A Chabad rabbi, Rabbi Harlick, myself, and a friend of his by the name of Douglas. We were the only, he, he did not have a funeral service. And there were just uh, three, uh, three of us there. A month later, Yosef's daughter came from Israel. And uh, boy, there was a lot of hurt in the relationship, uh, you know, uh, abandonment, not keeping in touch. You know, here they're in the United States and, and their children are in uh, Israel. And uh, Barry and Bacha, through their ministry, made it possible for her to come and take care as much as she could for her father's uh, affairs, clearing out, going through his apartment to uh, different uh, papers. And this uh, a lady, Elisheva, Elizabeth was, was her name, and uh, no anger, no bitterness, no resentment. And there's uh, Hillary right back there. Raise your hand, Hillary, right there. Uh, me and Hillary and Ellen, Ellen Herr, uh, right here, raise your hand, yeah. And we, we had gone out to, to lunch, and Hillary asked uh, Elisheva, your father was a Messianic Jewish Israeli. What is your perspective or your view of who Yeshua is, Elisheva? Boy, just like that, she said, I know he's the son of God. Baruch Hashem. Praise God for that. But I'm, I'm sharing all of this to give, a, you know, the, the videos that you show, boy, just awesome. And uh, all of the, the warehouse and, and the thousands of people that uh, you're helping. And we see it here, but here's this young lady who comes to Las Vegas as a result of their love no conditions, no strings attached, and you're still in touch with her, aren't you? Uh, when, when you go back to Israel, please give her a hug and a kiss. And the, the whole uh, point of this, I want to encourage you, will you be obedient to God in giving to them, to their ministry? It is a profound prophetic ministry. It's a biblical ministry, like uh, God Barry just uh, 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 mentioned. And it is a 
ministry that goes along, I will bless those who bless you. I will curse those who curse you. I don't believe there's anyone here who is of that persuasion. And Pastor John, God bless you and your church for hosting this very special, prophetic, godly uh, uh, couple. And uh, y'all have been married uh, 31 years, almost uh, 32 years, is that right? And I have only known of them to live it, to walk it, to talk it, and also to preach it like he did tonight. So I would like to encourage you to take a look at that brochure and from what I understand, and uh, Pastor John said, when you make out a check or a credit card, you make it out to their uh, ministry. What What is the name of your ministry? Huh? Vision for Israel. I knew that. Yes, yes, I do. So you make out your check, or if, if you're going by a, a credit card, just make it out. And that also comes from the release and the blessing from the pastor of, uh, of this church. And uh, I know you have a unique perspective of God's purposes for Israel, and for our Jewish people. And bless you, your church, good health, abundant provisions. Not just provisions, but abundant provisions. And Abba, I just, uh, I just uh, thank you for the honor of being able to encourage the people uh, to, to give, you know, I think this is the first time I have ever cried taking up an offering. <laughs> I cry at funerals, at uh, weddings, at bar and bat mitzvahs. I, I cry when people would call me about their dog or, or their cat. <laughs> but this is the first time you, the two of you have made me cry over, over an offering, and, and I'm, I'm just blessed. I'm, I'm not crying because I'm having a hard time picking up the, the offering. No, I'm not crying because I'm sad about doing this. I'm crying because of the joy of the Lord. Does that make sense? Yeah. Abba. Continue to bless uh, Barry and Batya, bless their marriage, bless their children, bless them with good health and many more years of making an impact for Israel, for the church, for our Messianic Jewish movement. And we pray these things in Yeshua's name. Baruch Hashem. Pastor John, you want to... Come up and, and, and dis dismiss, yeah, or if you have announcements uh, yes. to make. And, uh, he told me that that hat is a Billy Jack, a Billy Jack hat. I never heard of a Billy Jack uh, hat, but he told me it's something to do with, with the 70s, and when I saw him, you know, wearing his hat to the whole service, felt comfortable in wearing my Texas uh, uh, Stetson that are made in Pennsylvania. <laughs> Orthodox cowboys. Uh, and see, this is what you call double cover. <laughs> or, or religious solar paneling. <laughs> Before Pastor G comes up, I just wanted to say, um, and, and we can always close with a song, uh, just by the way, um, 
what you give is going to the work of the ministry. We're committed, as I said, to the physical and spiritual restoration of Israel. If you didn't come with cash or a check and you weren't prepared, we have some credit card slips also at the desk and you can also give by credit card. And we have a website, visionforisrael.com, uh, which you can see all the projects we're doing. We're loading up new things onto our new website all the time, which our son has created and designed. And uh, I just wanna thank you so much. And I don't want Shmuel to feel embarrassed out there uh, having cried taking up the offering because my own children don't even understand me when I go to movies, even if it's a children's movie yeah. and there's like something sad, I get tears in my eyes and they, they're so embarrassed to go with me to the movies anymore. So I don't know if it's an age thing or if it's just the pliableness that God is working on his potter's wheel on this piece of clay and that piece of clay, but uh, thank you so much. Uh, we also uh, just wanted to say, uh, there is a sign-up sheet for the free JNN news and prayer letter. Please print very clearly your name, address, and email address, and you'll probably start receiving it this week. And if you lead a Bible study or you're in a prayer group, please use it, it's, it's free, it's there to be used uh, as you feel fit to do so. So bless you so much. It's so great to be back here with all of you and uh, just thank you both very much. And we'll keep watching each other's birthdays on Facebook. <laughs> well, the Lord is good tonight, amen. Did you enjoy that tonight? We yeah. have yeah, a couple things is um, and Nikki has asked that, um, I guess she's hired somebody from the mafia not to let anybody out of here until she wants help putting the chairs back and all that stuff. So come on, Nikki, so people know who you are. Do they know you? She kind of did all the legwork in getting this done here. So she'll give you instruction on what to do. Just go to her, don't come to me, because I, I don't even know how to set the, where I didn't, but she remembers how the rows were. So. We need your help because we're going to have church here tomorrow morning, okay? And then one last thing, you know, is um, our church is sowing a, a seed into uh, Barry and his wife. And so I was just wondering maybe if you and your wife and maybe my friend with new friend with the cowboy hat would pray over our church here and believe God for us. Because the more that we do, or the more that, so we can do more even next year. And so would you guys... Pray for us and pray for our church and just believe God that he'll have his way here. You can put on the good coat now, so. <laughs> the pastoral coat. The pastoral coat, here we go. Let's stand uh, together. I think this would be uh, uh, the best blessing, the most appropriate blessing over you and your wife and your church and over everyone here. Uh, we receive the blessing of being here tonight. We take the blessing to our homes, to our work. We take the blessing to our children, our families. Yevarech Adonai v'yishmerech Ya er Adonai Pana Velecha Vihunecha Yisa Adonai Pana Velecha Vyasem Lecha Shalom Yisa Adonai Pana Velecha Vyasem Lecha Shalom. El Señor te bendiga y te guarde. El Señor resplandezca su rostro sobre ti. Y tenga de ti misericordia. Y tenga de ti misericordia. El Señor alce sobre ti su rostro. 
y ponga en ti paz. El Señor alce sobre ti su rostro y ponga en ti paz. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you and be he gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you peace. The Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you shalom and give you shalom b'shem yeshua in the name of jesus sar shalom prince of peace principe de paz en el nombre de jesus también baruch hashem very amen thank you lord we receive that lord god Father, we just thank you, Lord, for here at Family Worship Center, Lord, that, Lord, you would stretch the cords and the stakes, that you would stretch the cords of this tent, Lord God, and strengthen the stakes. Lord, that your word will go out from this place under the guidance of your Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. Lord, we pray that this will not just be any congregation, fellowship, gathering, but Lord, that you would increase and add to its numbers, O God, to free, Lord, your servants here, to be able to serve this community and thousands of others. Lord, I thank you for the G's, Lord God, and ask you, Father, for your divine blessings upon them, the leadership teams here, Lord God, and that all of us can work towards that same high prize prize of the goal before us, set before us. Lord, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And we commit and seal in our hearts what has been spoken and sung tonight in Yeshua's mighty name. And all God's people say, Amen and Sababa. Listen, I also just want to recognize Ralph and, and uh, Mindy their two beautiful uh, daughters. And, and this gentleman, what is your name, sir? Vern. Vern. Security, thank you for being here to provide protection. And boy, you know, if you think some of these shootings only take place in synagogues, look on the internet, church shootings. And boy, it is really important to have someone like Vern in our congregations. Well, thank you so much for coming out, everyone. You guys are dismissed. Stay in fellowship with us, and then please help Nikki and everyone put the stuff back. So. I love it.